Staying in the medical field now, there are growing concerns about antibiotic-resistant bacterial infections, which have now been labelled a new pandemic. Two scientific studies found that life-saving antibiotics have become less and less effective as the bacteria becomes more resistant. Now, Mark Middleson is a professor of infectious diseases and HIV medicine at the University of Cape Town and uh, says this is a major problem and he joins us now live from Cape Town to discuss this further. Prof, thanks so much for your time this evening. Um, you know, when we see headlines now saying this is the new pandemic, you know, it's, it's very easy to think, oh, here's another uh, scientist uh, being alarmist. Um, but uh, we cannot forget what a miracle of modern medicine um, antibiotics actually were. It's easy for us to forget it because um, it's so easily available. Uh, it's used in so many uh, medical practices on a very daily basis. This is something to be very, very concerned about. And you say in the uh, column or the article that you've published, you say that South Africa is one of the worst culprits uh, when it comes to the bad, bad practices that is at the root of uh, this um, uh, antibiotic resistant bacterial infections taking hold. Uh, uh, tell me uh, where the problem is here in South Africa. Well, good evening. And I mean, just to address your in your introduction, um, this the two two issues. One is, unfortunately, this is not a new pandemic. This is a, a pandemic that um, has been occurring for um, a couple of decades now, at least. And it's been fairly sidelined as a number of other major public health crises have by COVID. Mm. But uh, as you said, you know, antibiotics really underpin the modern medicine that you know today, all the medical care that you take for granted is underpinned by the use of antibiotics. So losing those um, medicines because of resistance has an, a major impact. I mean, just to list a few, surgery is every time you have a, a surgical operation, almost every time you will have an antibiotic to prevent an infection. When we treat everyday common, uh, common infections like cystitis or pneumonia, meningitis, these are bacterial infections which, without antibiotics, become untreatable and deadly. And then we also have to use antibiotics to prevent infections in vulnerable people. Cancer therapy is completely, you know, c completely changed. Transplantation is uh, uh, un unthinkable with antibiotic-resistant infections which are untreatable, and that's what's happening. Now, the reason it's happening, basically, is overuse, misuse and abuse of antibiotics that have been occurring for a long time, but has got worse and worse. And when you look at uh, the number of antibiotics that are used globally, it's the BRICS countries, including South Africa, that are the major users of antibiotics. Now, antibiotics are not only used in humans, they're also used in animals for food production. And antibiotic resistant infections can occur in those animals and be transferred through the food chain to humans. So it's all about antibiotic use and misuse. Now, this study that you mentioned um, is an amazing study called the Glo Global Burden of Disease Study, which put a number on deaths. Now, as I've just said, deaths is just one outcome, uh, you know, the worst and saddest outcome. But in terms of deaths, that found, looking at over 40, 470 million different pieces of data, that found that in 2019, 5 million people died with an antibiotic resistant infection and of those 1.3 million were as a direct result of that infection being resistant now consider that with covid 19 over the past two years we've had 5.5 million deaths it's not oranges and oranges we're mm. comparing there are some differences but the magnitude of this and the way that it infect it affects the medicine that you and i take for granted every single day is really profound and we need to wake up now and understand the problem. Uh, you obviously are on the ground and as much as you do academic work, uh, you speak in your article about your work at Hrutiskir Hospital and uh, how over the last 15 years you've seen a continuous rise in resistance to antibiotics. Talk to me a bit about um, that real life experience. I mean, uh, compared to 15 years ago, what are we talking about in terms of the numbers of cases you're dealing with and what are some of the uh, drastic actions you've had to take when it comes to some of of these cases you've had to deal with yes absolutely i mean 15 years ago the sort of antibiotics we would have had to use for difficult uh, resistant infections in those days 
were actually quite benign in a way. I mean, now uh, we are at our last resort antibiotics in an ever increasing number of infections. And sadly, there are now, again, as you mentioned, really untreatable infections because of resistance. And that is requiring, in a very small number at the moment, but an increasing number, drastic actions that would have been unthinkable 20 years ago. I mean, the most drastic that you know, we've been involved with, unfortunately, is completely resistant bacterial infections in uh, people who've had a knee replacement. We've had four or five cases, I think, last year. And the only way of treating that infection wasn't with an antibiotic, was by amputation. And, you know, that's taking us back 100 years and more uh, before the, the advent of antibiotics. And that's just one example. But there have also been outbreaks of almost untreatable infections on um, transplant units, uh, particularly bone marrow transplant patients are very vulnerable. We've had to close wards um, over the last five, 10 years at Khuriskia. This is not just happening at Khuriskia. This is playing out in every single hospital um, and health institution in the country. And it's a global phenomenon. Now, you spoke earlier about the overuse of antibiotics uh, when it comes to animals reared for food. Uh, should we as lay people also pay attention to the overuse of antibiotics, let's say, uh, from your local GP um, uh, or a, a pediatrician, as it were, uh, antibiotics for children? Is that something that we should be keeping a closer eye on um, as well? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the bottom line is the more antibiotics we misuse, the greater this problem occurs. It's a, you know, it's, it's a numbers game in part. Now, antibiotics, important to know, is that they only treat bacterial infections. So viruses which cause the common cold, flu, mm. many of the aches and pains that you get, diarrheal illnesses in the main... These are generally viral illnesses or other illnesses which do not require an antibiotic. In fact, it's like you know, trying to put a, a three-pin plug into a two-pin socket. Mm. It just doesn't work. And all it does is cause resistance and causes side effects. But the other study that I mentioned in my article, which was published two weeks ago by Australian scientists, have looked again at this question of the use of antibiotics in children and potential longer-term effects. And there are very interesting and increasing associations with a variety of allergic disorders, with a variety of neuropsychiatric disorders, and in also with weight gain and obesity and inflammatory bowel disease. So everything points us to the, to the same issue, that we have to stop using and abusing antibiotics. When you next have a cold, don't go to your doctor asking for an antibiotic. If you've got a cold, take symptomatic treatment like paracetamol and decongestants, etc. And don't go and see your doctor unless it gets extremely bad or much worse. Yeah? When you're in the shops, talk to the shops about antibiotic-free antibiotic meat. You know, there's a lot that you can do and keep washing your hands like you did in COVID because that reduces the spread of bacterial infections. Uh, Prof, just before I let you go, uh, what is the uh, general feeling from uh, your colleagues in the medical industry? Is there, uh, is there an acceptance and awareness of how severe this issue is? And um, have there been moves to try and elevate uh, this issue to the levels of government, the health department, uh, to try and do something uh, about this uh, a pandemic? No, absolutely. I mean, in terms of for, in terms of the prescribers, unfortunately, it's a very mixed bag. You have some incredibly good um, users of antibiotics, and unfortunately, you have an awful lot who don't use antibiotics optimally. And then, again, it, it would take time. There's many reasons for that. Internationally, this is a major issue. This topic of antibiotic resistance went to the UN General Assembly in 2017 with a high-level meeting, only the fourth health topic to do that. And there is international work going on through WHO and other partners. And at a national level, we have a, a national action plan, and the government has a committee, the Ministerial Advisory Committee that I chair, with colleagues, and there are bodies of work trying, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to address this. 
But until the general public and the non-specialists start to understand how antibiotics underpin everything that we do really in modern medicine, or so much of it at least, and understand that there is a growing problem and that is being lost, then we have a real problem. We saw in COVID the power of threat to make us do things. Unfortunately, that threat is coming increasingly now in the form of antibiotic resistant bacteria and the South African public need to wake up to this. Okay, thank you so much for your time this evening and insight. Um, that's Mark Mendelssohn, Professor of Infectious Diseases and HIV Medicine at the University of Cape Town. We thank him for his time this evening.